People Purpose Place is a non-for-profit that has evolved from a practitioner with decades of experience in housing. And with mastery of high-performance housing, I had a crushing realisation that all of that technical skill and mastery didn't matter at all because, unfortunately, we're not addressing the human need. And so the need for people has been the focus of our non-for-profit People Purpose Place. The goal of the exercise is to think about humans thriving and homes to do, encourage people to be the best version of themselves, which is quite contrary to how housing and the discussion generally occurs. So that was a crushing realisation to have. There still are some fundamentals that carry over. And instead of just talking about the enormous cost of housing, and I'm quite familiar with material cost, uh, sustainability cost, and um, the cost of people being excluded from housing, the problems aren't going to go anywhere. And in fact, in Australia, as an example, our leadership has perhaps been ambushed by a tortoise across the last four decades. This situation is entirely predictable and could be foreseen in changes to the housing marketplace in Australia in the 70s and 80s. And I suspect from conversations with uh, compatriots in the UK and some of these similarities certainly occur in North America where um, political and leadership-wise, we talk about the economics or the finance of housing. Unfortunately, we know is from our own personal experience that the cost of poor housing outcomes are far, far greater. Suffice to say, from a thrive and a sustainability point of view, we are concerned about impact on the planet. Um, but I'm pretty confident that our planet will endure far beyond our species. Our species may blow itself up with our poor practices and, and housing is a major contributor to the impact on the planet from man-made uh, overuse of resources. But before, far before all that happens, we have just getting along with our neighbour, just getting along inside our house, and just getting access to housing and enormous human costs. All of that said, we are absolutely certain that with intentional consideration, housing can and should enable us to individually thrive. Just bear this in mind, but that is not at all considered in the place you live today. Where you live today, nobody has said what would allow Richard to be the best version of himself working for Greenpeace. They have only manufactured that house to fit an economic criteria. Uh, and that's the consequence in the developed world, which is catastrophic for the human outcome. So I stumbled across this from a, a book I read quite recently. And it's quite impactful. In the developed world for certain, today are homes for money, not for people. Just consider what that actually means. And to follow that through for a direct example, I had recent uh, interaction with a chap who was working in aged care. And he was a not of Australian uh, birth or an origin. And he has given up his supervisory role and full-time employment in Australian aged care to return to his village of birth. And the village of birth that he's returned to doesn't have running water, doesn't have electricity to the home. But the thing that it does have and that called him to return was community. So when he has, he's returned a few times in the time he's been living in Australia and working in Australia, and he had the recent experience, the most recent trip he returned home, he had 13 people from his village 
come to meet him at the airport because they were so excited about him returning home, which is a beautiful, heartwarming, connected community experience, but not at all our experience in developed world housing example. In fact, we have never been more connected with these beautiful technological platforms, yet never more lonely. And that's uh, a terrible cost for our humanity. And we've realised within People Purpose Place that if we can address that psychological need for us humans, we'll do much better off. And perhaps some of those things that we see our neglect of elders, our youth uh, feeling that they have no supervision and, and running amok, um, and some of the community crises that we feel that we have, and perhaps the greatest tragedy in Australia is that according to the World Health Organization, Australia has the second highest incident of adult depression of nations across the globe behind the Ukraine. So we aren't doing so well right now. We do, uh, and our collection of people within Purple, People Purpose Place absolutely believe that we can do it better today. We don't need change of legislation. We don't need dramatic change to happen. It largely starts with thinking and an intention to produce homes where you can thrive. So I really appreciate a, an opportunity in a platform like this to have a longer form discussion to get beyond the headlines and the media statements that talk about housing. Because quite frankly, they do very little uh, to inform conversation and we need to have a longer conversation and we need to get difficult and uncomfortable in that conversation. Our collective experience uh, over multiple decades says that we need to change from thinking about the bricks and mortar to feeling at home. Now, for a lucky few of us, we recognise to return from overseas travel or just from returning from working away from home, there's a visceral feeling to return to home, whether it be your home country, your household home, um, and it's a beautiful feeling you can't put a dollar and cents price on. We've taken that initial splinter of thinking in our mind about what a thriving home would feel like and evolved that into a 10-part workshop series. And all of this data, and this, this is an introduction tonight to the idea, our website has a, a mountain of this information on it that you can dive into deeper. So from thinking about bricks and mortars to feeling about home, we've evolved a 10 part workshop series. We have to do the deep diving and thinking and discussion because if we don't change our actions, we're gonna get the same response that we've always had. And the same response we've always had in the matter of housing, as I've outlined earlier, is a very high human cost. And hopefully, we can move beyond that. So to start our individual journey, Therindu might be thinking about your background and, and where you come from and how you might approach housing. Each of us has have our own uh, backstory, which then skews how we act and behave in relation to housing. So I'm going to outline a few groups. There's a group of us who exist and we would say to ourselves, I'm probably okay. I have a house, I've, I've paid it off or I've got a mortgage and I'm in the system. And two thumbs up, that's fantastic. Um, you might be okay. And that's, congratulations. Certainly in Australia, that is largely a function of luck about the time and place you were born rather than necessary uh, an enormous amount of talent. So there's another group who maybe have heard about elders who are um, searching for housing and elder neglect. 
And so thinking, I know, I know, but what I can, what can I do? This group might find themselves very uncomfortable if they just considered what would happen if you stopped your income for a week or a month or you had long COVID and maybe you're out of action for three months. And that very quickly gets people to realise that um, I might actually be not quite as okay as I thought I was. Then there's a group that we all value highly, and often these are our community workers, teachers, firemen, nurses, uh, police. We generally pay them quite poorly, and they struggle to actually house themselves, certainly in metropolitan, you know, central metropolitan locations in domestic, uh, in developed world. So as an example I use in based in Brisbane, the high-end schools in central Brisbane, when a teacher has finished their qualification, they cannot afford to live close to that high-end school. So they might be the best performing young up-and-coming professional teacher, and they have to commute an hour and a half to get to and from that high-end school. And there's all the flow-on effects that can they coach the rowing team? Can they do tutoring after class? Can they, all of that time is burnt up in commuting to and from school. So the society and the community around that inner city school misses out. And true, much the same is true for nursing and policing, that they have unable to spend discretionary time close to that community because they've had this extraordinary commute to manage. And then there is a group of us who hopefully we're starting here tonight where we open our mind to a better way of doing housing. As an example, many of you may have already seen this. But if I describe a rectangle on the page and say there's two horizontal lines within that rectangle, some of you will have an absolute venomous belief that one of those lines is longer than the other. Then some of you will be surprised to learn that they are the same length. And still, now that I've explained the logic of it, some of you will still want to check with your own tape measure and measure the line. This is human nature. This is how we're, we're made. And we have to have a heap of subconscious patterns for us to just get out of bed and get through our day. So that's very, very normal behaviour. We have a bunch of those patterns that influence how we consider housing. And mostly... The first conversation I've spent decades in the space of housing, the first conversation everybody has is about the things, how many square metres, and what's the price, which perhaps are not the most useful metrics for a great home. I'm conscious of time. Um, don't buy into the media headlines that we have a housing crisis. Certainly in Australia, we don't. And if we, I, I did some research, uh, very back of the envelope research around the globe today. In the UK, we have much the same situation about housing, how many people, residents per household at the moment. In 1916 in Australia, we had 4.5 people per every house. I grew up in a shared bedroom with my brothers and that was a very common experience. Now I talk to first home buying couples who insist on having a four bedroom house because at some future point in time, they might have a child or two. Let's think about that. They're now shackled to a 30 year mortgage at 40% of the disposable household income or two household incomes at a minimum. So we need to have better conversations. Instead of saying we have a housing crisis, 
we have a thinking crisis about the topic of housing. Most of us will have seen this before. Maslow's pyramid hierarchy of needs and psychological needs, if you can see this at the bottom of the page, are fairly basic needs. If we can't have these met, we're not going to spend time at our self-actualization in our best self. All of us would want to be the best version of ourselves and spend all day doing that. I want to be the best husband, the best son, the best golfer, whatever, whatever my passions are. And I would love to spend all of my life working on that. But the truth is you have to have these foundations in place first before you can spend small amounts of discretionary time operating at that level. And the one that is commonly missing here is shelter. So in Australia, it turns out there's about 50% of Australia's household have a stress about their shelter, whether it's a rental or a mortgage. That stress flows on to it impacts your relationships around you. It impacts your relationships at work and your output. And that's an enormous loss in human capital right there. We have mapped just a very basic path. From this state of confusion through to home sweet home. It takes time. At a minimum, we expect people would have to invest six months of education to develop their thinking and go on a journey. It isn't easy and it's not for everybody. But absolutely, if you go through that journey, you can have a better approach to your housing needs. Maybe there's less housing stress as an outcome and maybe you can develop your golf swing and be the best version of yourself. I'll flip through these quite quickly. I appreciate uh, that we are tight for time. We've broken 10 sessions up into three groups following people, purpose, and then place. And at the end of that, we would expect that you're prepared to take the necessary steps for a home that you can thrive. I love these two quotes to close on. Um, our website is there for you to, to go and reference if you're interested in further digging. And it would appear that what I'm talking about here in Australia is common in experience in other developed, nation, other developed markets around the world. Gabriel Mate is a, a current, a very uh, well-renowned writer and thinker. And if you're a younger generation and like the Matrix uh, movie series, would you rather be disillusioned or live under an illusion? For me, I'd rather be disillusioned and do the work. And Rab Rabbi Tarhon, um, I'm not sure if I'll pronounce the name correctly, you are not required to finish your work yet neither are you permitted to desist. For me, this work will be the end of my days and I hope that I can bring a few people along on a journey towards homes where they can thrive. It may be that I bring one home along. It may be that I bring hundreds of homes along and uh, I'd love to do that in a community who have an interest and have a need. So if that resonates uh, for you, I'd be more than willing to take questions after the end of this presentation and hand over to the next uh, presenter. Thank you very much.